Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2014. Half of our quarterfinal is done and dusted. It's in the history books right now. And our two men advancing onto the semi-finals are Rain and Polt. It's going to be an absolutely amazing matchup. Kolaris is with me. Uh, quick reflections, because we're, we're running a bit short time, but quick reflections on that last game, because you, you seem to be a bit excited in the commentary booth. Yeah, just a little bit. That last game was... Pretty impressive. Uh, Jack Shu was pulling so many great moves, but in the end, Rain is ever the defender, ever the solid player. Rain the robot. Rain the robot, man. I said Indeed. he had no soul during it. I know a lot about this, obviously, <laughs> but uh, he's still, he's just a killer, absolute killer. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to our third quarterfinal in just a moment, but I just wanted to remind you out there, the sick nerd ball of voting has officially opened. Okay, so all we need to do is go to our Facebook page and vote for your favorite player of the tournament. It can be from the open bracket, it can be from the quarterfinals that you've already seen today. You could even wait and see how the other quarterfinals pan out, or it could be from the group play from the previous two days. Vote for your MVP or the sick nerd baller of Cologne. The votes will close after the last semi-final and we'll announce the winner just before the grand final a little bit later on. Um, match three is Jadong versus Patience. Mm -hmm. The last remaining Zerg, he, he was the last remaining Zerg yesterday, <laughs> he stayed in the tournament. It's great for the tournament to have that kind of mix, but he's up against a very, very good player who's in a very rich vein of form. Yeah, the thing about Patience is, is that ever since that DreamHack run that he had, Patience was basically the DreamHack butcher at that tournament. He, for some reason, came through and just eliminated like well, the majority of the best players in the tournament. Everyone was like, wait a minute, who is this guy? Um, and he could quite easily do the same thing here, actually. There's, you never really know exactly what's going to happen with Patience. He's a very unpredictable player. He plays solidly. Um, and going up against Jadong, who was showing a little bit of shakiness when it came to his ZVP in the group stage, could go Patience as well. Yeah, it said yesterday on Twitter that he wasn't playing very well. I admitted that himself. Mm. But today's a completely new day. And we know what he's like. When we get to knockout stages, he is the man. Yeah. He made five consecutive finals last year in a row, admittedly finishing second in all of them. But finals are his thing. And all he needs to do to qualify for Katowice is reach the final. I think he'd actually be OK with second place this time around. Yeah, it's the one tournament where second place isn't really too bad. And then the next tournament is the place where the second place is probably kind of going to sting. Yeah, that's going to so, hurt. It's definitely going to hurt. He doesn't want that one. Doesn't want the next one. Uh, thank you very much, James. Uh, we'll hear from James at the end of the game. But now it's time to go over to our commentary team for match number three, our third quarter final of the day. It's Jadong. Can he make it through as the last remaining Zerg or has patience got his number? Thank you very much, Red Eye and Kolaris, and welcome here to the casting desk. Rhett, every time we seem to encounter a Jadon game, I'm going to ask you the same question. How excited are you for this one? I'm super excited to watch Patience play. He played amazing in the open bracket, and I can't wait to see what he's going to teach me about PvZ. That's right, because you would be the one looking at exactly how Patience played this one and not Jadon. And this is going to be the third quarterfinal of the day. We've come down to the second half of the round of eight. And I'm personally very, very happy to be bringing you this one alongside you, Rhett. We've had some fun so far in this tournament and let's keep that rolling here. As we're about to enter the veto process, Patience on the left-hand side here, of course, from Team Alien Invasion, and then the tyrant himself, Jay Dong, on the right-hand side representing Evil Geniuses. Walk us through this map veto, though. Yeah, uh, Patience getting rid of uh, Daedalus Point first. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if that's needed anymore, but something that we see now is that Protoss players have vetoed it for so long because it used to have such a big ramp against uh, Zerg. Mm -hmm. But now they still veto it. Um, it's a it's a fine pick, and uh, Jadong starting off with Yonsu does not want to get uh, force fielded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put it that way, Immortal All Ins force field's pretty good there. Uh, and this is, of course, a best of five if you haven't been following the other games in the quarterfinals, and we'll be best of seven once we reach the final. So it looked like Patience was picking map number one there, so Habitation Station to begin on. That's a, a good pick for uh, for Patience. I wonder if he has if he has any plans uh, to utilize the gold base in funky ways, like we saw yesterday yes. from... Uh, who was it that did that? Uh, it was Jadong versus Stardust? Stardust, or yeah. Or Manor and Stardust, both of them. I think it was Stardust doing that, and of yeah. course uh, Sun did it uh, at oh, Assembly yeah, yeah, it was, as uh, well. Yeah, it was Stardust. So Polar Knight there uh, is Jadong's choice. Uh, a little bit more comfortable to play on for him there. Heavy Rain from Patience. And then Frost and Altazim if needed. There is the handshake. And these two players, uh, when it comes to who they are in esports in StarCraft, I think they're worlds apart. Yeah. I think you'd agree there, right? Yeah, Jadong is, of course, uh, a well-known champion. 
and uh, that started already a long time ago, back in 2006 or 2007, when he first made his rise to the very top of the boudoir food chain, and ever since then hasn't really yeah. left. And this is the 17-year-old Patience playing for Team Alien Invasion, only joining StarCraft 2, didn't even play Brood War, Warcraft 3 or anything like that competitively, joined StarCraft 2 only about a year and a half ago, is friends with Crater Prime, he played on the Prime team, if anybody uh, knew his older name, he was called Lucy Prime, so some of you uh, may ring a bell, uh, but he never really accomplished anything, never made it into Code A, Code S, uh, and then, traveled to Europe with Team Alien Invasion, and then he made his major performance at DreamHack Winter, and that's where he shot to fame in the international scene, and he went through a lot of players there, Rhett. I mean, he went through the group stages, his first game was against Naniwa, and everyone was like, wait a minute, <laughs> Naniwa's meant to win this game, and then he went through the group stages, and the players that he beat at DreamHack Winter, which is where he shot to fame, SOS, Polt, MMA, Innovation, before falling to life. A really solid run there. He did have a really solid run, but he did not really prove himself against Zerg players there. But he did at this he, tournament. Yeah, he definitely did a couple of days ago, beating Hyun as well as... Leenok. Leenok. That's Those are some of the very best Zerg players in the world, normally. Yeah. So. And of course, Jadong, the five-time semi-finalist, or finalist, sorry, five-time finalist last year in 2013, before cracking a victory towards the end of the year. He got that NorthCon championship. And in 2014, he will be playing in the America WCS Premier League. He got round of eight in Finland just a couple of weeks back. And here he is playing for another top four. Is Jadong going to get what he wants and dreams of? playing in Poland live in front of that audience. We're about to find out, Rhett. We are here, loaded in to game number one. And in the top left of Habitation Station, it is the Red Zerg, the Tyrant, Jadong. And of course, this guy is probably one of the largest fan bases in StarCraft. And yeah, and rightfully so. I mean, he's one of the most successful players ever. And up here, looking to prove his worth against the Tyrant. It is, of course, the blue Protoss player playing for Team, Avi uh, team Alien Invasion. It's Patience. And uh, looks like Patience starting off with the pylon in the main. So mm. nothing crazy like yesterday when we started off series with proxy gates and, and other yeah. shenanigans. Uh, Jadong going for an Overlord, and he's also been using the Extractor trick, which I find remarkable because I believe it's been figured out three years ago that not <laughs> using the Extractor track is actually better. God, Jadong. Thought you knew better than this. But there's actually a lot of Koreans that do that, maybe just because it's a habit. Yeah. Well, Patience did gain and has been uh, on a momentum, really, with gaining fans after his performance at that DreamHack Winter. He was the massive underdog in every single series he's played, but he's starting to make a name for himself now. He's one of the highest Protoss barcodes. Uh, barcode, if you didn't know, is, of course, just a uh, an alias. It's just a bunch of lines to protect your identity on the European server. He's one of the highest Protoss players in the European server. He also got a pretty high finish um, in the... Asus ROG tournament last week as well, the week, couple of weeks ago. Same finish as Jadong, round of eight. He is also probably one of the best Protoss players uh, against Swarmhost at the moment because since he plays the European ladder, all he does is practice against Stefano in the last yeah. week and a half. And that isn't Jadong's preferred style, the Swarmhost. He likes his Zergling Roach Hydra to Corruptors or Mutalisks, but has displayed some decent but not amazing Swarmhost play in this tournament. But I think it's not uh, unlikely that on this map, where one of the better Swarmhost map in the map pool, uh, we might see it from Jadong. I think he has uh, realized that if he wants to be as successful as possible, yep. he's going to have to use Swarmhost. And more than anything, Jadong wants to be as successful as possible and win everything. So he will do whatever it takes. Do you think he's uh, whispering to him or shouting at himself, saying, I will kill you against patients here? Or is it I not think, intense uh, yet? That's enough? what he used to do, but. Uh, not yet, maybe later. Maybe later on. And he is taking a, a quick geyser there, so... Looking to get that link speed. In a best of five here, compared to a best of three, which player would you uh, say that would kind of lend its favor towards? Protoss here, or Patience, or Zerg and Jadong? I feel like the shorter the series are, the better Protoss is. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you get a kind of a, a hang of how a Protoss player likes to play, you can predict them a little bit more easier. And also, Jadong, of course, he's absolutely the master of best of series, and he's yeah. already shown so many times that he does not care. He will six pull you in the final game, like he did against Scarlet, or yeah. like he did yesterday against Stardust, going for the nine pool when he was 
0-1 behind and almost eliminated from the tournament, so he will take insane risks, and that's great for these longer, longer series. Well, as you can see, the two builds that both of these players have gone for are rather generic overall. We've just got the, you know, the gateway expansion here coming out from Patience, who's now just taken double gases in his main. Jadon has seen that, so he knows that no gateway pressure should be coming off two gases like this uh, and can predict that we should be seeing a tech structure come down, which in this case is the forge, yet unscouted from Jadon, who has opened up uh, with the spawning pool hatchery into Zergling speed, which is on its way and is now looking for his third base in a couple of seconds. Probe didn't see that though. Yeah, and uh, the forge here means that most likely uh, there will actually be some kind of sentry-based uh, uh, pressure, or he's just going to get a very, very early start on the upgrades and mm. you know translate that into maybe a fast Twilight Council and, and, and a macro game. Uh, I th I've seen also fast third bases come off a of fast forge too. Yeah, off yeah, with that's, plus that's one what, yeah, that's what they can do and then get yeah. the very fast plus two. Yeah, yeah. Set himself up very well. All right, well, so far, the scouting probe there was eliminated, and he's not going to get too much further information in this game, but there's nothing really else to gather here. He spotted the third base, which is going to give him comfort that there isn't a Jadong all-in coming his way, or an attack coming his way. As Jadong throws down the precaution of the Roach Warren, he's getting on a second gas to be able to, um, you know, kind of bring the gas income required to build Roaches, and also look to tech up shortly. And it's kind of up to Jadon from this position to get some more information. And seeing that probe there, what do you... What yeah, is this, this could still be an attack, but I think more likely it will be that uh, fast yeah. third base. And there's the Nexus. And Jadon's looking with his overload immediately yeah. and sees it immediately. Yeah, that's a huge thing for Jadon to find that now he can just safely drone. Does he drone or does he attack this base? He's actually making three overlords, so he could be looking to attack. And actually, the way he's set up, it's uh, it's pretty, pretty good to attack here. He's got so much gas in the bank, he could make so many roaches. And this is already a very, very dangerous situation for Patience. And if he's not careful, Ooh. he might lose the first game very quickly. Jadong starts the layer as the Hallucinated Phoenix goes in there. And that's kind of a bit of a sense of... Yeah. Uh, it kind of plays one image, but it means the complete opposite here. Because he's going to see the layer. He's like, oh, I suppose Jadong is droning now. Yeah, to really support the layer. Very smart and reaction. And he cancels it. And he cancels it, yeah. Yeah, good play here from Jadong. And he's going for this attack. 10 roaches, 14 lings. And the goal is to break the third. And as a Zerg player, I'm sure you can tell us exactly what it means if it isn't broken. Yeah, uh, if it isn't broken, you basically are in such a bad position that you can't come back. But this is so many units, I really don't see any way that this is not going to work. Uh, Patience is even moving forward in the middle of the map. The, 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 the Phoenix does see the, the Zerglings, but he does not see anything else yet. It's going to be so late he's when looking, he He's going to see the lack of layer, and all of a sudden alarm bells must be ringing here. Of course, there is a recall available, but that's one less Photon Overcharge he can use here. And Jadong... Zergling straight through the natural, just straight in the recall immediately. And then we are going to see the robotics facility get tackled a little bit there. But, but now these Zerglings are stuck, so I'm not yeah. sure if this is actually good for Jadong because these Zerglings could have been really, really useful in combination with the Roaches. Now Patience just has to deal with the Roaches. And Foats and Overcharge evacuate, uh, evacuated there as... Wait a minute, he's, he's got a couple of Roaches here, but at least he can go down to the third from this point. Uh, once again, a few units get stuck, and now he goes for the third base, but I feel like it would have been so much better if he was just going for the third base straight away. And there's a lot more Zerglings coming to help this out, but they die pretty fast here. Jadong needs to kill this third base, and he's yeah. not doing it, Red. And what you said before is if he doesn't destroy it, then the position that Jadong's going to be in is pretty bad here. I mean, he's picked off a couple of probes, sure, but he doesn't kill anything. Yeah, and there's no more reinforcements from Jadong on the way, so this attack has officially failed now. And this is a, a huge blow to Jadong, uh, and also very unexpected. Normally, when you see these kind of openings, you at the very least take out the third base, but the fact that he was able to get in the natural with the Zerglings and the backfiring. Yeah. And Patience with the fast recall and the force fields just fought small groups of units at a time, allowing him to be extremely cost efficient and now adding Immortals and Blink. And this is a great position to be in for Patience, but Lings do get in once again and they're going to go right to the main base here. So Patience is going to have to defend that. Yeah, and but so far pretty good for the alien invasion player. A probe gets lost, but no real damage being taken. And let's see what Jadong actually wants to follow up with. He is getting a macro hatch. He's still not he even still on the layer. Still doesn't have a layer. That has to be a mistake at this point. He has all the money in the world. He has 700 minerals and 800 gas. There There's the lair. Yeah. So and Jadong looking a little bit flustered here. Um, his unit movement not as smooth as we normally see, and also his, his choices just... So now that Patience is able to keep his third base alive, you can see in the top left of the units lost how much uh, resources worth of units that Jadong has thrown away here. But Patience on three bases now. I wouldn't be surprised... I, okay, I was about to say, see, see some extra gateways being added on, yeah. because he's not that high at the moment. He's only on three. Gonna go up to six, but he has Blink 
and plus two attack with a couple of mortals with this and a lot of sentries. Yeah. No no gas is on the third base. This is going to be a heavy, heavy oh there's the gas actually, but this will still be a very big attack for patience and, and the, the way this game has turned out. Third? Yeah. This is this is gonna be extremely, extremely difficult for Jadong to hold off. And it all comes down to the, the money that Jadong decided he could have just droned. He could have just droned and, and seen the game longer, but he decided to go for the attack, it didn't work, and now Patience has found himself in a beautiful position. He's gonna move down here. He even catches a couple of these roaches! And well, that six, seven roach is gone immediately. Great force fields to start off with. Then uh, you know, Jadon, what, what can he do? More, more force fields, and the roach speed has not even started. Yeah, this is not looking good at all. This is looking fantastic for Patience here. Beautiful defense, but I think it was more Jadon's mistakes than anything Patience did himself. Jadon just canceled a roach warren, and from the way he's playing, he really seems a little bit thrown off. And for, uh, Patience is going to keep pressuring once again, moving forward. Nice forces on the bottom side, and he's going to be able to pick off these units at the top easily and. More, more bringing more stalkers. Yeah, and this looks like this game is at the moment going in favor of patience. He just needs to seal the deal now. Uh, with more and more reinforcements coming, that plus two attack about to kick in. As you see, five seconds left. Jadon goes in for the assault. Here come the drones. But really, is he going to get close enough to be able to pick off this Protoss army? Even if he does get close enough at this point, two immortals, that many stalkers, plus two upgrades. Yeah. Uh, this is going very, very poorly for Jadon. And, and you can see in the supplies. Over. This game is over, Red. Game number one will go in favor of patience. GG is called. And not the start Jadon no. wanted, but a great start for the youngster here. Fantastic start. Yeah, and uh, that, the way Jadon played that game did, ne did not look like the way Jadon normally plays. Uh, also, at the end there, he, he made a second Roach Warren, uh, canceled it again, forgot about his lair. You know, it's. I'm not sure. And I'm there sure. is the man that is just immediately, I imagine, thinking of yesterday's games where he only just managed to scrape through the group stage. He's, he's going to have to make some, some big changes and really find a better mindset to be able to bring his best game. Otherwise, it'll be Patience that moves on to the semi-finals here. Patience dealt with that very, very well. Mm. Um, his four shields were spot on. His build was uh, wisely chosen. It's a very uh, strong build. And uh, he didn't really make any mistakes, and that was enough to... Uh, take that first game. So now Jadong has to win three and Patience just two. Yeah, and I think it comes down to a lot of momentum and the mindset of game number one is going to affect both of these players a lot because imagine if Jadon played a perfect game there, he'd say to himself, all right, cool, yesterday was a bit sloppy, whatever, but I'm looking good today. Yeah. And then he plays again like that and then you can only imagine right now as you saw him on screen, he's like, God, it's happening again just like yesterday. Yeah. And he admitted, he tweeted, he said he played bad, he knew he played bad and you can only imagine all those thoughts are coming through. And then especially Patience who, you know, going up against such a veteran, Patience could have been nervous in that first game but now that would have been lifted off his shoulders coming yeah. into this next one. Yeah, and jadon has got to be, uh, you know, it's not something I thought I would ever say about him, but maybe he's even a little bit unsure of himself at this point, because mm. even yesterday, Jadon saying he's, he played bad, normally Jadon does not say that he played bad. He <laughs> Either yeah. something happened uh, that was out of his control, but, you know, he doesn't play bad normally. So uh, I'm hoping for him that he can uh, get back to his killer mindset that brought him all those uh, top two finishes. <laughs> all those top two finishes. I was going to say those gold medals. But <laughs> nope, those top two finishes, all five of them. As um, we do get ready to load into map number two now. So Haber Station Station is out the way, and we are going over to Polar Knight next. Yeah. This is uh, a nice standard map. Uh, one of the things about it is that the third base is often very much towards your opponent, mm -hmm. so it might create a little bit more uh, timing-based uh, plays. And also, once again, Swarm Hosts are quite uh, good on this map because of the short distance. You can easily reach your opponent's uh, third and fourth base. All right, so... Looks like Jadong is ready, just mentioned it in the chat. Likewise is Patience. Polar Knight then. Let's find out how this next map is going to shape up. Are we going to see the young player here from Team Alien Invasion really start his 2014 strong? A top 8 finish at the Asus ROG a couple of weeks back was a great start. He can top that here if he beats Jadong, move on to the top 4 and fight for a position in the Intellectual Masters World Championship. But not to go too far ahead of ourselves. Map number two here, still a long way in this best of five series, and as you said, best of five would be looking to suit the Zerga player, or Jadong in this case, the longer the series goes on, but he does need to make some changes. He really, really does, and uh, here we are on Polar Knight in the top of the map. It is the red Zerg player, evil genius's Jadong. And then down here, 
is the Blue Protoss. Currently leading one game to nothing is the Blue Protoss player playing for Team Alien Invasion. It's Patience! Sean, uh, the, the first thing I want to say about Patience is if you remember his games uh, against Linoc, uh, it was a two, quick 2-0, two and in the first game he took a very, very fast third base, and in the second game he faked taking a very fast third base and went 6 gate plus 1 forge all in. Yes, yes. So this you was a very, impressed, yeah. very nice mind game by him, and you know, I have the feeling that he might want to try to do the same thing. He, he might know that Jadong probably did watch mm. his game, so it might not be the best idea, but he's definitely a player who really switches up his builds and, you know, doesn't just decide, like, this is the best build for me, I'm going to do this. He also yeah. really much thinks about, okay, what does this guy, what kind of image do I have? What kind of image does, does he perceive me uh, that I'm going to play now and then play mm -hmm. with that and, and try to be unpredictable? And that's also one of the things that uh, really uh, marks, like, the, the top Protoss players. They're very good at that. And uh, this map isn't the friendliest towards an expansion play, really, if you think about it, for a f or a fast one, should I say, from uh, uh, Protoss players here. The the most successful third base I saw come out from Protoss players uh, a lot last year was actually Naniwa's DT um, build that he used. I'm not sure, I think he may have copied it from someone. I think he, he got Maybe most SOS? of his builds from SOS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was quite successful here, but we'll see what's going to happen. Double Gas has been taken quite early on here from Patience before even looking to take his expansion, which we can see a bit of a difference between build number one in game number one and build number two in uh, game number two here. Going to start that gas income quite fast. Jadong also uh, changing it up and actually going for three hatcheries uh, mm. before the spawning pool, so he, he, he also uh, deciding to take some risks in this game. Yep, and the calculated risk, and it will pay off for him here, of course, against this opening from Patience. Unscouted, um, yeah. and just just two gas completely before anything. Yeah, this is basically the, the best opening from Protoss you can hope for, because it's already two gas, so it, even if they scout you, they can't really punish it. And mm. Patience, actually, we'll have to see if he even is going to scout, and if he doesn't, then uh, you know, Jadon could just take full advantage and just drone, 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 drone. Best way to best way to be. I do it every game, but you do. It's it's only good against uh, in certain things. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, Jadon from this position here is going to get his overlords around the main base and around the natural, looking to poke in very shortly because he has spotted those two gases. And of course, as the reactionary player here, he's going to want to know what the gas is being. I mean, what's it being used for? What's it being mined for at this point? It is a sentry, and of course, the mothership core. Uh, First units. I think Jadong here is really fully playing to what he scouted because he didn't even get his own gas. Normally against uh, Gateway uh, first, you might want to get your own gas so you can deal with uh, yeah. proxy pylons. But seeing the two geysers from Patience, he's like, nah, I'm not going to be attacked anytime soon. I'm going to be able to make so many drones before I do anything with my geysers. And his economy is looking quite good now. I'm um, going to build a f the first set of Zerglings here. And he did skip them as well as the spawning pool was complete. So another little edge uh, that he used. And here we are going to see the Stargate play come out from Patience. It is inside the main base here, and it's not too difficult for Jadong to spot. Well, he's got a nice little overlord to the top uh, position that he can yep. fly in uh, at any time. Uh, mm. We'll have to see what else uh, Patience wants to do. He can add some gateways, uh, put on some zealot pressure as well. It's going to be two more gates, but still there are no probes out on the mm. map, so it looks like it might be a fast uh, third base again, or fa with Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix yeah. opening. Uh, and as Jadong spots the two gateways on the natural, he knows that obviously there's been something right before the two gateways have come in. So he moves an overlord south, sees the Stargate, and then does move out once again with his overlord. So from this position, you're Jadong, you've started three hatcheries, you've got a pretty good economy going already with nine drones about to pop. You've seen the Stargate, you've seen a Phoenix being built. What is? What are you doing here? Yeah, I think Jadong is feeling extremely comfortable right now. He's just getting some extra overlords. Uh his drone count is uh, 45 against 32, which is huge. It's a mm. huge deal. He's already got four queens, I believe. So he's got basically everything he needs yep. to deal with his Phoenix. Uh, and he's also gonna, he's also got some creep spread going already. And because of the openings, the Phoenix are going to be a little bit later than normal. And I think that he can just go straight for his lair here. And, uh, you know, ap after that, decide if he wants Hydras or yeah. what, what exactly he wants. I mean, he adds on 10 more drones there. Uh, and has even skipped the Roach Warren, if you if you can know as well. Not expecting any early gateway pressure. But we have plus one attack coming out here from Patience to dedicate to his heir. And he's not going to be making just a couple of Phoenixes here. No, he's got some big plans for his heir because that's a very, very early heir upgrade. You almost never see that. And uh, he does have... Yeah, and his probe count is so low too. 
Yeah, but it, it seems really unlikely that he would want to all-in from this. He's probably going to look to take a third base very, very quickly. Well, he's got three Zealots at the south side there, which he could use, which could go towards Jadong's uh, right-hand side base. But overall, these Phoenixes are going to get some work done now. They've uh, already picked off uh, a Queen there and going to get an Overlord too. Yeah, losing one Queen a little bit sloppy. The sport does finish now. Uh... Six Zealots now there. He cut his. Pro he wasn't making probes there. He did stop his probes. Yeah, he squeezed in these six zealots. It's been completely unscouted. So actually, even though this is very late, it's still very, very dangerous. The creep will spot it now. But uh, Jadong, how are you going to respond? There's no, there's no roach warren. There's no zirkling speed here. There's only a couple of queens. This is going to be pretty good here from Patience. He's played this out quite smartly, and he's going to get in there. He's going to go straight for these queens, and the zealots are going to do work here. Already picking off a lot of drones, and there is simply no units here. 26 are on the way, 26 Zerglings. But how long are they going to take to get there? A long time and immediately 15 drones gutted and just um, just taken out of the game. Yeah, 16 drones and what a way to lose them. I mean, all he, all he had to do was have some units, but he just didn't see the Zealots. He was in a great position and now all of a sudden he's not anymore and he's, he's up against the ropes and the Spore Crawler is gone. The Which Overlords means, are exposed, yeah. the drones are exposed. This and third base is, is in terrible shape now. The Phoenixes are just going to go untouched. Um, it looks like this, the Zealots will get cleaned up, but he can just pick off these double queens here. Yeah, and these oh, six, uh, the six uh, Phoenix half plus one now as well. It's going to be uh, a seventh one. Well, here comes one Spore Crawler, but the, the Hydras are going to be in trouble here. And, well, it looks like there are just enough, so he's going to push this back for now. But still, the amount of damage dealt. Yeah. What, what 19 a drones, a couple of Hydras. And then he's just fallen back onto the robotics facility, Robotics Bay. A great move here from Patience in game number two. And he is he is driving this car. Jadong's a passenger, and it is only going one way right now, and that is towards Patience in the semifinals. Yeah, and uh, Jadong, you know, he's just totally caught off guard right there. There was absolutely no reason for him to, to, to let that happen. And now, um, you know, Patience is looking really, really good. He's got all the Phoenix. He's going to be very ready for Muta Switches. He's going to have Colossus. He's already going to have two Immortals. Mm. Do you think he, he takes a third base or he might go all in from this? I think he'll take a third base, but I definitely feel he'll move towards Jadong's third as well. Because he still has the Mothership Core. Uh, I think uh, the way Patience is playing this is something I've not really seen before at all. I don't think I've ever seen someone go plus one Phoenix. Mm, so fast. So if you do get in here, and they're going to see a couple of gateways added on. It's not its not like he's climbing his gateway count super high. He's only at three right now. It's only gone up to five. Uh, sees the robotics bay, though. But uh, definitely thinking a third base here from Patience. Though I don't think he should just give Jadon the free time to be able to do what he wants as he continues to drone up. But the hive has started, and that's been spotted. Very quick hive here. Very quick. One thing that Jadong definitely could do to come back in this game is get some really nice Viper, Abducts, or Blinding Clouds. Mm. The creep spread is still looking pretty good into the middle of the map, so he is going to be uh, well set up against any kind of attacks. He does have a really large uh, Hydra Force now, and it uh, looks like Patience uh, is finally moving out to take a third base. Yeah, and from this position, where do you think Patience goes? Does he try to hit before the hive is complete as he pokes in and spots it once again, still on its way? Realizing that yeah. Jadong ideally here, um, just through what he's seen, is looking for a Hydra Viper combination of units. Is there a way that he hits before that the, the Vipers can come out? Does he wait and just throw down the Twilight Council and look to uh -huh. move up? Look at that. He's actually uh, Patience actually uh, not getting a third Nexus now. So he's going all in. So he's definitely, to answer your question, going to hit before uh, the Vipers are there. Well, plus two attack is not too far away. There are roaches being added on. Jadong does see this coming. And he also spots no third base on the left-hand side with a single Zergling. So he knows what is coming. The big question yeah. is, can he stop it? There are so, going to be so many lifts by all these Phoenix because it's more than normal. There are two Colossus, there's no Corruptors, and there's no Vipers to speak of. So he needs to get a huge, huge flank on this army to have a chance. Well, are we going to see that flank possible? The Vipers are actually coming out here, so he's going to wait. He's going to sacrifice this third. He's going to wait. I guess that makes sense. If he can kill the Colossus, he can kill the army. and. Yeah. Then I suppose he can maybe win the game. Yeah, good decision. Uh, he knows that Patience is two base all in, and here Patience goes. Oh, goes. he doesn't want to fight. He picks off a, a Phoenix there, or at least attempted to. They're based almost out here. Three Vipers, there's two Colossus. Yeah. There's also a lot of Stalkers at this point, uh, but Jadong definitely making the right call to wait for those Vipers. And Patience, what are you going to do? Are you going to. He knows that there are going to be Vipers. Are you still going to fight, even though you know there's Vipers? Or are you going to pull back and take a third base? Oh. Looks like he's going to keep going here. Ready, warps in another round of units. Here we go then. So these Vipers are going to be good enough for his patience. Going to look at a 2-0 here. The Vipers have been spotted there. 
by the Phoenixes. And here we go. The Pauls are going to have to be good. I should use Blinding Cloud there. Two Colossus get ripped in. And they're not going down super fast. There they do fall. And let's have a look at this. The Viper's coming once again. And Jadon's taking a pretty good fight, considering. Yeah, but there's, there were still two Immortals left. Those are doing a lot well, of look damage. Look at this. The Hydras are still left over. Yeah. But there are going to be continued reinforcements, though. And Jadon doesn't have the best of economy. Actually, look how much money he's got. Why is he not building units? He doesn't have the Roach Warren or Hydra list then. Was picked off, so he can only build Zerglings at this point. Looks like he will hold this, actually. Just barely. It's so close right now. And Patient's still pushing forward. And yeah, now he rebuilds the Roach Warren ah, yeah. and Hydra He lost den. his production uh, yeah, they were buildings on the right, on the right side. side yeah. So I can, I can only imagine that he was trying to build Roach and Hydras and yeah. just wasn't building anything at that point. Um, but there's the Zergling, so they are coming back in here. But the Colossus is gone, but I swear there was another one. There's one in the center of field here, and he's going to have to get rid of that immediately. Yeah, these Zealots also doing such a good job against these Zerglings right yeah. now. Jaden much rather have Hydras or Roaches. But he can't make them yet. Yeah, he can't make them, and these are actually changelings. Now. <laughs> I thought they were actually ze uh, zealots, but this looks pretty bad here as the Colossus comes in. At least the Warp Prism was picked off, but there are pylons not even that far away. And the uh, as long as the Colossus stays alive, there's not going to be anything that he can do to combat. He may have to pull drones in a second here. Yeah, pulling drones is never a good thing. And here we go one more time. Zerglings charging in. The Colossus does actually get taken out, but there's almost no units 14 left. 14 Hydralists, though. The Hydras didn't finish. That's a lot of Hydras. It is a lot of Hydras. But if it's still can, just two base versus two base. If he can push back Patience just a little bit and, and get these Hydras all at the same time, you can see, oh, oh. nice Blinding Cloud there. Yeah, really good Blinding Cloud, but the Stalkers go for the fight here. And the Hydras popping out one at a time. Drones are going to come off the line here as Jadong feels the desperation. Hydralis is still 6-7 of them there, and they are dealing a lot of damage at this point. Remember, they do have plus 2 attack and plus 1 armor, and the game continues on in a back-to-back -back fighting episode here with 76 up by the patients, 105 to Jadong, and he continues to be able to get units in this fight. And constantly more Zerglings on the way, and now it really looks like Jadong will hold, and he's actually, he pulled all his drones earlier, so he's up on, on, on 67 drones, and if he does defend this attack, he's in a great position to win Wait, this game. <laughs> patience is bringing probes with this, it's really funny, he's bringing probes across the map, but hold that thought for a second, is another fight's gonna take place here. There's a lot of Hydra, Steel dealing out a lot of damage, good force fields to separate some of them. And is Jadon going to be broken here, Reds? The force fields do, and another great These Vipers are just so, nice. are so effective right now. These Vipers, and he's keeping them alive. Here come the probes for some reason. Uh, there's not all of them, there's just like eight of them. Uh, they're going to die really fast. Seven or seven or more roaches coming in. I don't know, I even understand it's how he's got plus three attack on the way at this point. And here comes another attack. Are we going to see drones come with this again? Uh, I think he has to. I mean, he has to hold. I mean, this is so close, it's so hard to call. They've been fighting nonstop for five minutes, and still... But Jadong now over up at 120 supply, and Starting I think climb. in the end he will hold this. I mean, the probes are not going to help that much. Here's a lot of roaches now, good at tanking these, yeah. these stalkers a little bit better. And the Vipers just kind of bringing in more energy. They're just, con they're just consuming all these structures around, and we're going to see another Blinding Cloud shortly here. There's one more. Uh, uh, there's a good force field on the right-hand side, but that's an excellent Blinding Cloud, and Jadong stays in this game, and throughout this tournament has been making these unbelievable holds. And it looks like he's going to do it again here. Yeah, he will hold off, and he will take that game with this. Very I can't believe unbelievable this. that he actually pulls this one out. How is this happening? Just, we casted his games against the, the Proxy 2 gate earlier yeah. on in this tournament, and he managed to make the hole, but he has successfully held on for the last five to six, seven minutes. He retakes his third base, and this is, this is absolutely incredible. Plus three attack about to come in now. Look how many units he's lost. He's been hitting every single lava inject, no matter what. He was pulling queens, remaking queens. He was able to keep his unit production going. And Patience is like, how, do, how did I not kill you? And now Patience tries to take a third Nexus, but uh, I think Jadong now with the plus three timing that he had in mind the whole game, I'm sure, uh, will be able to end the game here. I can't, I'm still blown away by this. Jadong yeah. has been pulling some remarkable holds in this tournament. And the game goes on, so it's, it is just still 1-1 one, one upgrades here for Patience. After that all-in attack, Colossus started to rebuild, third base going to be taken. And you can only imagine at this point that Patience is just going to try to get probes mining from his main base over the third and, and, and just kind of play this game out from here. Where yeah. does he go? He's got the Twilight Council coming down, does he go blink? Does he look to get plus two? Does... He'll probably look to get blink and plus two, and then uh, possibly if Jadong allows him, get some Templars to counter these Vipers. Mm. But uh, right now, Jadong ha does have one more Viper, and it's got full energy, and I think he's looking to go. He wants to do something back to Patience after all that abuse. 
and who can blame him? Who can blame him? Jadong's even seen this third base being built, so he knows that that's what Patience's plan is right now. And that Viper is going to be very, very important with two Colossus outs. He's got perfect amount of energy for yep. two pulls, so... Yep. He can uh, pull both of these into the Roach and Hydra Army with the plus three attack. Going to be dealing out a lot of damage here. And this could be an equalizer here from Jadong. Spreading around the left and right hand side, looking for the most optimal fight. And he finds the Protoss Army. And let's have a look. He's got to the Nexus on the left-hand side. Obviously, Patience doesn't want to let that die, so he's going to have to take a fight here. Hydra's at the front, which isn't ideal, but one Colossus pull, second Colossus pull. One of the Colossus is barely going to get away here. Yeah, as it does get picked off last minute, but as you can see, so much damage. GG is called. GG. And J Dong. Crazy. Crazy game. Pulls that one back, even though it looked pretty much gone. What an awesome decision to, to get his hive that quick. Uh, those Vipers were paid for themselves. The, the hive that quick, the decision to sack the third, to yeah. pull back instead of trying to keep that alive. Most Zerg players would say, right, off, off two bases, I can't do this, I need that third. And, and would fight to save it. But he finds yeah. a way and consistent macro back at home. His love injects his unit production and he holds on red. He does hold on, and he does uh, pull it back to 1-1. Uh, but uh, on the back of the last game, uh, Jadong feeling uncomfortable once again in the start of the game. He set himself up really well, and then just in a, in a little bit of a silly way, six zealots ran into his third base, mm. and all of a sudden he's in a very bad position and then starts playing really, really great. And we see the Jadong that we're used to seeing, like making 10, 10 right decisions in a row to win a game like that. But he's going to have to do that from the start of the next game. He can't allow to make those kind of mistakes if he wants to win this series and, and, and go further in the tournament. And it seems uh, a lot of the times this weekend, Jadong's found himself in a, in a situation where the Protoss player's got the upper hand and he has to work and sweat the victory out when it could have just been as simple as not taking the damage in the first place. And I think you nailed it right there. He's just not got to let these things hit him when he's, when he's unexpected. But anyway... Wow, what a start to this series. One apiece in this yeah. best of five. So, next map is going to be Heavy Rain here, Rhett, as we conclude that last one. Uh, what are your first initial thoughts when seeing this? I think this this is Patience's pick, by the way. Okay, well, I think this uh, is a great map for uh, Swarm Host. This one and uh, Habitation Stations are the best ones for it. And uh, Patience, when he played this map earlier, he also went for a two-base all-in. So I'm not sure what he thinks about this map. But we'll have to see what he what he wants to do here. Uh, last game he did not scout at all. He went for the gateway first. Maybe we'll finally see some some yeah. early early cheeses by either player. Some cannon rushes. We haven't seen a cannon rush all tournament. That's uh... yeah, we haven't actually, have we? No, we haven't. Well, I guess it comes down to the opening build orders here. We'll see what's going to happen here. Can patience get back on the high horse after his great start in this series? As we do get ready to load into the first map and down here. As the red Zerg player pulled that back quite nicely in game number two. Playing for Team Evil Geniuses, it's Jadong. Please, Reds. And his opponent, spawning in the top left of Heavy Rain, representing Alien Invasion, Korea and Protoss, it is Patience. No cannon rush this game either. Sorry, my friends. No, I know well, you like. It, it could, it could still be a, a forge in the main. <laughs> like a little bit less likely, yeah. but I, I guess still possible. Do you like cannon rushes? Do you enjoy playing against them? Uh, I enjoy playing against them when I when I stop them successfully. Yeah, that's the same with me actually. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not all the time. Sometimes though, it Sometimes. feels really good when you put your drones on patrol, like where you. The Protoss is supposed to make the cannons, and, they can't. and then the little Pro runs in. It's like, ah, you can't make my, your cannon, and then you just defend and kill them because they're way too far behind. But sometimes you just barely miss it, and there's mm. just ten cannons in a row going up, and you know that you're screwed, and that's always rough. With Jadon going hatchery first again here, um, I know he's used this build a lot on this map as well, but I can't help but feeling uh, he's like, come at me, bro, come on, change your build. <laughs> I'm gonna do this until you try to stop me. Yeah, well, Jadong uh, never afraid to take risks, like we mentioned earlier, and uh, Patience this game will actually scout, so uh, 
Don't think Jaden will once again go for the three hatch. He does see the probe, and that would be risky to do. He will get the spawning pool. Do you think that Patience at this point even realizes that last game he actually played against the three hatchery first opening? When did he actually first scout in that game? Yeah, he didn't scout at all until there was Phoenix. Yeah, uh, maybe he map. didn't even know. So he probably doesn't know, and that's good for Jadong. If Jadong yeah, realizes yeah. that Patience doesn't know, that I've already used this. I'm he, not sure. Would, would he have realized though? No, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think when you, when your Phoenix get in, you realize. Oh, there's like a no, few more I mean, drones. No, but I mean, would a Jadong realize that he nah, didn't realize? Maybe, no, maybe not. That's a little bit hard, I think. Yeah. All right, well, Jadong is attempting to take his third base here, but the probe is tracking it, so it's not going to be an option. Yeah, and Jadong goes back to his uh, opening he was using yesterday a bunch as well. We'll get a fast third hatchery, no gas. And, and uh, yeah, Patience opens up the same like he did game number one as well, so both reverting back to our previous builds. When Stardust did this uh, this build against Jadong, against Jadong and saw the fast third base, he went for a very, very fast uh, four-gate zealot push. And Jadong defended it with uh, with spine spine crawlers and zerglings, mm -hmm. and after that, Stardust went for the immortal all in, and that was actually success successful. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Patience saw those games, he might want to opt for the same. All right. Well, Jadong has an overlord inside the main base, just kind of tracking what Patience would be trying to do here, and he hasn't really made. Well, he's probably made a decision on what he's going to do, but we are yet to find out. As second the second guess. guess is taken. What's well, that's that? a big tell. That that means that uh, most likely it's not going to be any kind of super fast uh, four gate zealot mm -hmm. pressure. And uh, Jadong does actually spot that. So Jadong, oh, he didn't spot that. He, he didn't, didn't go in it, all no. the way, but he did check what the gateway was making. That's just going to be a sentry and a forge once again. So patience will fall back on the way he opened up in the first game. Fast and third. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, oh, it yeah. could be the six gate. Uh, uh, could be, yeah. But he, the one he used against Linux on this map. Yeah. It definitely could be here. I'm interested to see whether you would go down there because you were very impressed with how he played that out in that previous series. We'll keep track of things though. First two gateways are going to be added on. Uh, or sorry, the, the second or third gateway, should I say, has been added on to the front base of Patience. And Jadong is looking around with the Zergling on the left-hand side, seeing what he can find. While setting up, he hasn't waited too long to take his gases here. Uh, it is... Uh, it's not too bad. And the Roach Horn is down as well, so he's definitely not taking any shortcuts. Yeah, he, he's kind of uh, like. There's a few ways to play this. Like, you could get link speed. I feel like if he would get four gates out uh, on him with this build, with not having uh, link speed, mm -hmm. it could be very dangerous. But he's gonna get away with it, and, and he does get the Roach Warren for safety. Yeah. So he's gonna be in good shape against any kind of plus one timed attack with roaches instead of links. All right. Well, the mothership core is chasing away the zergling on the third base here, and it's not too far away from when this third should be placed down. So. Jadon pokes in, gets pushed away by a sentry, and it is going to be a third. So the probe is on location, it is going to build this third base again. So this is the, so far, we can call it the go-to build of Patience. Yeah, that's what he feels most comfortable with. And this time when when and if Jadon spots this, and it looks like that Zergling on the right is going to be the one to do so, then how does he approach it? Is it the same like game number one? Does he try to play risky? Does he drone up more? Well, he, he already went for a lair, he's getting burrows, so this time there will not be any kind of huge Roach Link timed attack. Yeah. And uh, after this, I guess uh, Jadong has a free choice, like what kind of composition do I prefer in CVP? Because he can pretty much has the freedom to go for anything right now. He's not going to be under instant pressure anytime soon. He's only just about to find out about the third base though. For the first time in this game, he moves over and says, okay, cool, um, same as game number one. And there's quite a few units being used here by Patience. He's moving down. There He's going to do a little recall. bit of pressure. There's going to be uh, six, seven roaches, so Jadong should be fine against this. Yeah, definitely nice uh, play here. And let's see what damage does get dealt. A couple of extra units are coming in. Six Zerglings in addition to the ones that are also out. And Patience is even going to go for these. Plus one attack's about to finish. He may catch a couple of these units. Jadong does pull back onto Creep. And it looks like Patience is going to have a better scout with his Phoenix. And uh, his Phoenix sees quite a few units. And from this position, you can only imagine he's just going to fall back. Scouts out everything, and uh, most notably the lack of, uh, of, of three gases just now mm. being added, I so think. So knows that this is quite heavy roach link this for the time a, being. This is a big roach burrow play with a lot of zerglings, and Jadong did make a lot of units because he thought he was under attack. And I think this might work out in Patience's favor, who's now getting the Twilight Council. We'll be able to get, we'll be able to get a click plus, quick plus two at yeah. Immortals. Yeah, both players high five in the middle of the map and say, all right, you go back, I'll go back, and eight drones begin, and Patience falls back onto his third once again here. And we'll be able to contain the high ground if any units do pass through. He should be completely fine with the Photon Overcharge and quite a few sentries here to cut and divide. Uh, 
He does not four skill though. That and now that's one just showing. Didn't use anything so far, but so we're looking back at game number one, which is actually hold that thought, because Jadon is still on this left hand side here. And is gonna try to take a bit of a fight here, folks. You know, which are still activated on the right, actually dealing with these roaches. This is very, very inefficient usage of these units for Jadong. He's not gonna be able to kill much of anything. Just throwing away his roaches and things here. Yeah, and as you can see in the Unilus Lost tab, he's lost six, seven hundred resources in this game compared to really nothing from patients so far. And a couple of extra links get donated. So a bit of a weird move there. Uh, but overall, we are seeing almost what, you know, could have been in game number one in a different map, different sense, because Jadong didn't decide to try to break the third and is able to drone up comfortably and now take a fourth base. And we are going to see Swarm Host. And Drone Loke has been researched, but melee upgrades, yeah. not concentrating on the Swarm Host upgrades. That here. normally means that you want to do a Brute Lord Swarm Host timing attack so mm -hmm. that the Brutelings uh, have the best upgrades possible. So I do not think we're going to see a very defensive Swarm Host play. Um, we're just going to see a Swarm Host Brute Lord sulky esque timing attack in this game. And now the Swarm Hosts have been revealed. There's a couple on the, on the third base which can borrow here. There's no Observer, there's nothing to detect. And immediately a second Robotics Facility has been thrown back down, but we'll come back to that in a second. Is Patience shouldn't really be able to get anything done here with more and more Swarm Hosts popping out. Patience uh, oh, yeah. Actually, if he swings around to the left-hand side here and Force Fields, he may be able to kill this third and just get out. Yeah, he's doing a really good job with, his, with the few units he has, and Jadong is just not really prepared for this. He wasn't quite in position here. And there's a lot of Force Fields. Yeah, you can just kill the hatchery and leave. Oh, the Mothership Corps is being targeted, though, by a couple of Queens on the left-hand side. Oh, my. <gasps> oh, wow. that, that was, was so, so close. close and so good from Patience. He gets out after killing the third. That was that was one headbutt away yes. from that a headache. Could, if he loses his Mothership Corps and his whole army there, no matter if he kills the third, that's not a trade he wants to do. <gasps> but he stayed so calm under all that pressure. He was like watching the hit points on his Mothership Corps. He's like, I've done this in practice like 20 times. Excellent. I'm okay. And now he sets himself up beautifully because he already saw the Swarm host. He's got the second robotics facility down. One thing he's missing is a robotics bay, actually. I think he, he's not going to double tap Immortals here, he is does, he? He does have it, actually. Oh, he does? He does have it, okay, yeah. so he's got the robotics bay down and can easily set up himself quite well. And you know, start his harassing game now with the Warp Prism out, Zealot Charge on the way, Double Colossus starting. This is brilliant for Patience, and you talked about it before the series begun. He's going to have a lot of experience against Swarm Wars play, especially yeah, in Europe, definitely. being played on the server. Everybody uses it. And now with that jump start of kicking the third out of the game, that's a pretty good uh, position for him to be in. And also his Warp Prism is timed so nicely. He's got plus three on the way. He's yeah. instantly putting pressure on the on the left side of the map while he's going with the swarm on the right side of while he's just uh, Yeah. And he's gonna he's gonna hit a timing way before Swarmos hit critical numbers, before there's any spines, he's gonna slow Jay down Jadong down again inside the main base. And six extra gateways! Plus three attack, he's just going to be able to build a massive army. And Jadong's got nothing, nothing inside this to defend right now. He's got 15 roaches, 11 swarmos, and they are not close right now. Yeah, and this is going to be so hard to defend. As soon as he moves all his units from the right he side, he loses his base on go. the right. Yeah. It's not good, Red. Go. So many zealots now. They have plus two. A couple swarmos also coming over to help. Jadong looks like he will defend for now. But uh, not long from now, there's going to be four, six more Colossus. Mm. Great units against Locust, and Patient looks in, looks in full control of this game. Also, trying to take his fourth base, does get uh, denied by a couple of Roaches. This that is good for Jadong, this is a small win. Yeah, the right-hand side wasn't broken yet, and hasn't been broken. The Warp Prism inside the main base is still alive, but is getting broken down as well. It's actually almost going to die. Um, but Swarmos holding this right-hand side. And uh, Jadong holds on. Uh, yeah. As Patience continues his onslaught here, and with all his gateways finishing, I can't even start to imagine how big his army's about to climb up towards. Yeah, now there's four Colossus, two more are trying to join from the coming from the main base. Uh, Jadong does run in with a few roaches, gets force fielded, and uh, these are just going to die. And now once again, he can just snipe that hatchery and pull back. And that should be his overall goal here. Anything else is an added bonus, but doesn't want to get too greedy. And that hatchery is going to be destroyed here, but... Oh, the Swarm Hosts! Been targeted down here, great move from forward, kind of simple really, seeing them there so exposed and three, four, five of them are getting killed and Jadong has to evacuate and patience. Great moves good. by him, I mean it didn't start off the way it should have, but the Warprism is actually still alive in the main base. Jadong had to pull back his roaches, so now he can once again uh, warp it into the main base if he decides to do so. These plus three Colossus are doing so much damage, Duke does get pulled, we'll lose a couple. But I still feel like there's too much here for patience, and he's yeah, going to take out a forward, base. and he's going for the Swarmos here, bringing down one at a time, and he's picking off all of them here. In trade off for his stalkers, though, 
Um, he's going to flash the blink to the main base. actually finds the Vipers. Nice blink there. And can easily run away and blink out. But he has lost a lot of supply in that movement. He lost his overall army. And Jadon with all these roaches and lings approaching and, and coming into the game. But all that war prism still alive there. Yeah, great blink there. I feel like it was a slight overextension from uh, Patience. I mean, he did lose his whole army just to kill a few slomos. Yeah. But he can still keep this going. And as soon as, as soon, these blink stalkers are still doing a lot of damage. And now once again, blinking down. Making full use of the mobility of the of the Blink Stalkers. Another Viper dies. Jaden will finally push this back, but once again he blinks away and he will survive actually with oh. most of his stalkers. The game settles down for now. Warp Prism's been killed. Jadon climbs up in supply. He's doing rather well on three bases if you think about it. 177, 106 supply. So despite Patience pulling out a lot of moves, it's Jadon who's got yeah. uh, you know uh, uh, the numbers in his favor, the uh, army and work accounts. And actually, the fact that this fourth got denied is so huge because now Patience, even though he looked like he was going to play a fourth base and just a harass base game, essentially now he's kind of all in because he was still on three bases and lost his whole army. And actually, things are looking really good for Jadon. I wasn't expecting uh, this to go this way at all. Well, the game is settled down as mentioned and Patience will fall back and take his fourth base there. You think that uh, Patience was just a little bit too keen for the victory? Very eager, yes. I mean, he was killing all the swarm hosts, he killed the fourth base, and he had a war prism in the main. All he had to do was pull back, take his own fourth base, and he's in an absolutely brilliant position. But he, he went forward, now he lost everything. And yeah, that was just maybe his inexperience playing a little role in his decisions there, because the way he set himself up was brilliant, and you can yeah. see that he practiced a lot. But if this game goes in favor of Jadong, you can only start to, you know, feel for patience. This was everything was kind of going his way here. Picked off the third base, picked off the fourth base, but it is Jadon currently with the supply lead. Colossus production is, I mean, there's only two out at this moment. We yeah. have the Hive finished. We have Adrenal Glands on the way. Not the best of upgrades overall. They're very spread out here for Jadon. Just starting plus two attacks and throwing down a Spire here. And it seems like he's back on track for his original plan. Yeah, he is uh, getting the, the upgrades for his attack now. He's not going to hit any kind of bootload timing anymore. Uh, the game is too crazy for that. Uh, but actually, I think feel like right now both players are still in this and both still have a chance to win. Uh, Jadong has a lot of Roach's links on the left side, going to use that to deny this fourth base. Meanwhile, he's putting on some pressure with his Swarm host, so he's being rather aggressive with them and think that is exactly what he wants to do. This is exactly how David Kim imagined these Swarm hosts to be used. I think so too. <laughs> I agree. And this, these are actually the, the fun type games to watch with Swarm hosts. Uh, <laughs> This is how I was using them when Hots first came out. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. Pressure one side and then attack with the with another force on the left. And it is working really well at the moment. But the Vipers there get picked off. Blink, nice, great Blink actually down there picking off both of them. And uh, Jadon is going to sacrifice his entire army. To not get to the Nexus. To not get the fourth or just get the fourth. Uh, wow. Just gets the fourth. And that was a big trade off there. But of course, it's not like Patience can surely go counter attack with a Swarmos putting so much pressure onto the third, or is he just going to say, you know, F it, I don't care about my economy. It looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. These, uh, these War Prism is doing so much damage in the main base. Meanwhile, the army of patients is charging into Jadong's third base, and the Swarmost, where are they? They're they're coming back now. They're coming back, but it's long overdue here. They, they do siege up from quite a distance, and all of a sudden, this took a turn for the worst here. Jadong still with the supply lead, but how is he going to combat four? Colossus here. These locusts need to get some damage done. And they do start their assault. 16 additional roaches. Decent upgrades on them, by the way. Yeah. And the locusts are starting to do a lot of damage there, actually. It's Don't so hard to call. Jadong still is up huge on supply, but it's so much in roaches, and these Colossus are still alive. Ooh. My Barkons now being That's a lot of Barkons. That is a lot of Barkons. And the onslaught from the north with the locusts. Going to join forces together. Oh, nice little one hit. One laser beam. One little stalker shot brings down that vi uh, viper. And Patience with a very brutal army here. Which way is this going to actually end? This is, a, this is actually exactly why you don't play aggressive swarm hosts. And now Patience is just in the natural, taking out all the drones here. And all right, Jadong's made his decision, Red. Defend this base with swarm hosts and spines while use the roaches to kill everything else. Yeah, he's going to try to counterattack. And there's actually nothing here for Patience, so he's going to be able to take out this third base rather easily. Oh, but the will recall. he be able to get enough? Oh yeah, recall, of course. Well, the recall comes in and a, and a crazy aggressive blink forward there. Traps a lot of these roaches, but they do manage to escape. But, I mean, 
help me. Well, I mean, look at this game. Yeah, this is crazy. I, Which way is it going? I mean, we, we see consistent aggression from both sides. Jadon trading off so much of his army. But the main point is that Patience's main core force is still alive. And does Jadong have what it takes to combat it? Because yeah, that's he eventually has to. I'm trying to look at all the action going on the map and actually forgetting to, to commentate because there's just so much happening. He does kill the third base and he does get a lot of spines on his last remaining base, but Patience, still with all these Archons, all these Colossus, is defending, is up hugely on supply, has a mining base, has the better upgrades, is getting two more Colossus, and Jadong is now just left with some very immobile units and will lose his last roaches as well without sniping the fort. So now, what options does he even have left, Sean? Four roaches, a bunch of swarm hosts, and a very, very defensive and passive setup. Yeah, and the, the, the swarm host can't do anything from here. As soon as he leaves with his swarm host, then Patience can just kill him, and Patience doesn't really have to do anything. He knows no, that he, he took can, out all those yeah, bases. Yeah, Patience can sit back, man. He's he getting can, Storm, which is awesome against Locust, and uh, he's got to feel really happy with this game. Yeah, really happy. He can uh, relax a little bit. Uh, he's got, he's got the Warp Prism still around in the bottom right. He's about to take a new base and further increase his army strength and just build up. This has been a really back-and-forth game and a back-and-forth series here. Um, but overall, it looks like Patience is the one that has gone through the middle crazy part of this game and has come out in the lead, as we can see. Yeah, and uh, you know, he made very few mistakes. Uh, he overstanded once, when, but he, overall his gameplay has been really solid and he really knows how to harass against people who go swarm host. And his micro has been really good. There's been a few times where yeah. he just barely picked off a few vipers and his play has looked really, really good. I think it's time for Patience to live up to his name and be patient, Red. <laughs> well, he's actually moving forward on both sides, so I'm not sure he is very patient right now. He needs to be. Uh, Warp Prism inside the main base has actually just gone there again and started warping some additional Zarts, so that's going to be a bit of a pain uh, to kind of deal with, because not only can it get to the main, but every other base that's not around these spine crawlers. Patience with the Mothership Core he is going to move forward here, and he could be looking at a second map victory here. Storms come down on the Locusts. A couple of Vipers there, but wow! Woo! See you later. Uh, they were immediately evaporated. And uh, the best way to die, really. You don't feel anything. some pain. showmanship, some storms on the drones, and uh, Jadong just left with some naked swarmos, has to pull them back. And this time it's not an overextension. This time Patience is looking to end the game right here, right now. Yeah, he's looking to end the game, and I think that's going to be the way that it is ended. GG is called, and Patience takes map number three and goes 2-1 in the lead here. With a very crazy series, really unorthodox series as well. <laughs> Yeah, uh, really, really crazy plays. I mean, uh, once again, Patient goes for the fast dirt nexus, and Jadong wanted to go swarm host, but uh, just caught off guard. From the start of the finish, Patient did a really good job attacking and then recalling, attacking, recalling. Jacket's off red. It's, it's serious time. It is off. It is serious time, and it is currently two games to one for Patience. We will be back after a quick commercial break to continue this series. Don't go anywhere.